All right, guys, so right off this morning, we've got a fresh cow, a fresh Jersey that has milk fever, a very, very mild case. We are headed up right now to treat her for that. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys how we do that. So I've got a pail of boiling hot water and we have our calcium glucosinate, it's 23%. Uh -huh. This is stuff that you can put in intravenously or that you can put it under the skin. Under the skin is what we're gonna be doing today. So I wanted to show you guys that. This is not the calf from the cow that has milk fever. This is actually from um, another jersey that we had just calf. So she is right here. So she's our oldest jersey. She's, don't quote me on this, but I think she's 17. She's either 16 or 17. I'd have to look at her chart to tell you for certain, but she is our oldest jersey. Um, she's having no issues. She calved late last night and so far so good. Um, the one that does have a case of milk fever is actually the one I showed you guys a couple videos back. She calved yesterday morning and she was good all yesterday, got up fine, but this morning she tried to get up on her own a few times and she was very, very close. She just couldn't do it. She's laying up and she's alert. Her ears are just a little bit cool, but like I said, she, she's sitting up and everything. So she's right here. We've got her out in the aisle so that she could just kind of sit comfortably, get up comfortably when she's ready. So. Let's give that to her right now and I'll show you guys how we do that. So first thing you do, like I said, is warm up your bottle and stuff. You gotta make sure that's nice and warm. Um, it just goes in much easier. Calves are gonna scream the whole time I did this, by the way. Okay, so you also wanna heat up your tube just to make it more workable. And we also sterilized our needle already, so. So once that's good and warm, you're just gonna take out your bottle, pop off the little rubber top. They come with a metal top. like this for now. You're going to want to find a spot that you can pinch some skin. I'm going to do it right here. So you're going to pinch the skin so that you don't get any meat or anything. Just pinch the skin and then you're going to want to insert that needle just like that. There we go. And you're going to hold your bottle up. And you should be able to see bubbles where it's coming out. You can see those down there. That's how you know it's breathing and it's coming. You can see them going down the line as well. And then as that's going in her, you're going to want to try to flatten it out with your hand because it is going to build up under her skin. So I'm going to have to let go of the camera and do that. It's much easier when they're in a stall and you can hang this on a hook. But you guys can kind of see how it's pumping up here. You're just going to want to gently smooth that out don't like it and I don't blame them. It's got to feel like a lot of pressure. She's feeling good about it so far. You can see she's chewing her cut and everything, so she's not a severe case by any means. She just has a slight case of it. It's actually going pretty fast. Um, I'm not trained in this either. I've never had any classes or anything. Our vet showed me how to do it like multiple times. He showed me how to do it under the skin and also in the vein, but I've never gotten up the nerve to do it in the vein because if you do it too fast, you can kill them. And then the whole thought of that just makes me very nervous, so I've never done that before. We always just call him if we have an issue. I think it's been probably two years since we've had a case that bad. She should get up right after this. Basically, if you don't know what milk fever is, it's just a low blood calcium level and they just can't get up. They use all of it during calving and then they just can't get up after that. So I think they just came out with a study. I don't think they're like super sure on it yet, but um, keeping the cow's calcium low for calving, not calcium, potassium, what am I talking about? Keeping their potassium levels low might help fight against milk fever, might, might help prevent them. Might help prevent them from getting milk fever. Usually around this part of the bottle, they start feeling better and they start crashing. She's a Jersey, so she's pretty dramatic. Jerseys are very susceptible to anyway. And like I told you guys, if you were on your here, you didn't see this. Um, she's 10, so she's on the older side anyway. So that's gonna make her susceptible anyway. And then she's a Jersey and that breed in itself is just pretty much very, very susceptible to milk fever, so. They're pretty fragile cows. I think if somebody forced me to go with a whole herd of something, like no mixed breeds at all, I would probably go with a Holsteiner and Ashier. 
probably the whole stain because ash ears tend to have troubles getting bred back a little bit more. So I think I would go with the Holstein. I wouldn't go with the Jersey just because they're very fragile. And they're all so jerks. Not you. Just a little bit more to go. She's a good patient. She didn't, move, she didn't move at all. Just too big of a bag. You gotta stop making so much milk. She said, no thanks. If she can't get up in a while, give her another one. Yep. So this is the old lady that I was telling you about. You can see she's just kind of sprawled right out with her udder just kind of hanging there. She doesn't have the prettiest udder anymore, but she's been good to us and she milks good, so we keep her around. She's a good old girl, aren't you? We did actually have to pick up a whole box of that calcium that we just gave her. Um, I think he got six of them, so we just used one. Our vet was right handy, so he just met Brent somewhere, and uh, we picked up six of those just in case. We do have a lot more older cows and a lot more jerseys that are going to be calving. Um, we could come in tonight, and that old jersey won't be able to get up, so we could just give her a couple of these. If it's a mild, mild case, we give them one. Kind of a more intense one, we'll give them two. And if it's really, really bad to the point where they can't even lift up their head, they're shaking, then we will just call the vet and have them give it to them in the vein because it gets to them very, very quickly and we don't want them to have to suffer. So anyway, we gotta finish milking out the cow that we've been giving penicillin. She's milking right now. She's doing much better, by the way. She's the one that was sick that I was telling you guys a couple videos back. She has put on a little bit more weight. She still looks pretty bad. But she's milking better, she's acting better. Um, she just acts a little weird because this is what she acts like when you milk her. She stands very, very still and just kind of stares straight ahead. But she ate all her cornmeal this morning. She's been eating hay, she's been stealing hay. One of you guys commented in the last video that she stole the cow next to her's hay. And that is what she loves to do. She loves to steal hay and then she loves to throw it behind her and stand on it. She is the definition of spiteful. And as you can see, she's doing it again, so she must be feeling much better. Um, you love the camera, don't you? She says, look at, look at me. Right, so it's been a few minutes and she still has not gotten up on her own. I did try to get her up and she's just about the same as she was. So Brent does want me to give her um, another bottle of that. So I already have that warming up and we're just gonna give her another one quick.
You did it. <laughs> so that's how her udder is looking. She's got a nice bag. Really good producer, which I think is half of her troubles. But her milk looks good and clear. No mastitis or anything. We'll milk her out just a little bit tonight, not all the way, because we don't want to stress her out anymore. But she's looking good. We'll just let you walk around for a while, okay? All right, so now that we got her up, it's still raining, by the way. It's Friday, and it's been raining since Tuesday. Pretty much like this, all day, every day. So we're gonna take the truck over, and we're gonna get a load of bales over there. I think some second and some first, because we are completely out of everything that we hauled over here. The yard is finally a little bit cleaner. Um, they made a mess of everything plowing. You can see they tore the road up a little bit right here. Just everything. The road farther up is flooded completely. It's just really, really a mess. But what are you gonna do? Like some of you guys were saying, pretty soon it'll be summer, it'll be 80 degrees, and we'll be complaining that it's too hot. Some of you guys are probably like 80, but for a Mainer, it's really, really hot. Seems nice that we don't have to worry about the truck starting. Windshield wipers. Smallest windshield wipers in the world. By the way, this truck only has two speeds. High and low. High, low, and off. You can finally see the lawns again. Um, by the way, we did actually go and pick up some plow bolts the other day. We aren't going to replace the sweeps this year, but we are going to put new bolts on there. I think we can make it through a year without replacing those sweeps. They're a little worn, but they're not too, too bad. Brent has really, really good land as far as the soil goes, so it's not going to take a lot to turn that over. It's like, what is that? It's a tarp. But you can see how wet it is. Like, it's a giant puddle back there. That one's not that bad. Just really, really nasty. Uh-oh. He's either stuck or... I don't know where we're gonna turn around. I don't wanna get stuck in a snowbank, so... That would just really top the day off. We don't have any of these driveways plowed out, so we'll just go up to this other barn and turn around. And that's a mess. We won't get over there too far.
outside the frost can't keep up here. Now we gotta go clean out the free stall because tomorrow is the weekend and Sunday is Easter. So by the time you guys see this, it'll be coming out on Sunday. It will be Easter, so happy Easter, everybody. I hope you guys are having a good time getting together with your families and really enjoying this time of year. I know I will be, so I hope you guys are too. It's very windy out. So I'm glad we're gonna be in the Kubota, but we're not gonna have much time tomorrow. Jeez. So that's why we're gonna do it today. Anyway, let's put the hood up because not gonna be a pleasant walk to the Kubota. Jeez. Where's my phone? <laughs> nice. Okay. To top it all off, I'm pretty sure it's only like 30 degrees. So he's gonna meet us out back. We're gonna need the defrost in here too. Crank her up to three, baby.
it's just going to be way too wet. We're not going to be able to do anything. It's going to have to be sunny for like three weeks and no rain to ever make all of this go away. I don't think I've ever seen a march with so much rain. already hoe out all the stalls and he's gonna bed them when we're done but some of the snow drifted in here so it's pretty wet like there and up there there's the two bowls Neil is growing very well um, he's gotten so much bigger in the past like two weeks I swear boxes by the way if you've seen those in any videos and we had an exterminator come over and put out all these boxes and everything basically a giant waste of money supposed to go in there and eat stuff and then I don't know if they're supposed to come out and die but I don't know I've seen them go in and out of there like they're living in there I haven't seen any dead ones anywhere so
hoping Neil would come over so you could see him, but he's gonna hide. We'll sneak in there and stay off to the side so you guys can see him. Neil. There he is. So he's still pretty small, but he has grown a lot. He's only nine months old. Uh, he might actually be going on 10 months old, but still. He's fairly young and he looks good. He's put on a lot of weight and he's gotten quite a bit taller. So hopefully by the time summer rolls around, if summer ever rolls around, um, he'll be ready to start breeding the smaller cows. I think he's actually gotten a few of them already. We have some small heifers, Jersey crosses, and I think he may have gotten some of them bred. Uh, but I don't know, we'll find out. That'll be exciting. I parked right in a puddle. Can't even get around it. You're an idiot. I guess that's about it for today. We've pretty much done everything we can do. Um, it's basically just waiting out the rain now until we can actually start getting to work. Hopefully soon enough the sun will come and we'll get to be able to do more things. But thank you guys so much for watching. This looks funny over my head. If you are new here, please don't forget to like and comment down below and subscribe. That does help us out and we would love to have you guys join us. Keep it real, keep farming. Happy Easter you guys and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.